You are who you are yesterday, today and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never fail, you never change. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. Too faithful to fail me. Oh Jesus, you're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me.
that's it, right? That's it, sir. Bless you, bless you. How are you doing? Yeah,
So the public announcement is, my name is Minister Patricia May. I extend a warm welcome to each and every one, from our senior pastor Anthony, who is sitting on the roster with us, the ministerial team and the church membership here at the Church of God of Prophecy, Gloucester Street with, with Marines. We also extend our sincere condolences to Bishop Rose, Bishop Anne, bereaved immediate extended family. Sorry, I made a mistake there. I apologize. It's Bishop Anne. To your extended family. And friends at this difficult time, please know that you have been in our prayers and that we will continue to pray for you at all times. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listen carefully now. Today, when you enter this church, it may be possible that you may hear a call from God. However, it is unlikely that God will call you on your mobile, so I would respectfully ask you that you take a moment to check and turn off or place your mobile and silence. Please do not make it ring please do not answer a call in the church. God bless you and all of the time and thank you for listening. We will now move to the funeral service and I have the light in handing over to Bishop Francis while I decrease in Jesus' name. Amen. Sir? I am not Bishop Francis. I am Bishop Dr. Thank you. I want to welcome you again, all of you to this great day, the great the day that the Lord has made. And we are all here for this great noble cause. And I'm going to welcome Bishop Dr. Joseph for the word of prayer, to open with the word of prayer. Welcome, sir. Jesus, good morning to each and every one of you. Good evidences, your grace, your worship. Your Excellence, Your Royal Highness, doctors, professors, friends, families and friends, all of the call on us. Let us pray. Can you please to stand with you? Stand with you. Our we also greet the family from the beloved Professor Akin in Chicago, Christian and Martin, of the Ministry of the Father of love and compassion, Lord, who comforts all this morning we gather here in your presence. With heavy hearts. We pray, O oh God, that you will comfort us as we come to remember this great and wonderful woman. Father, we pray that you will strengthen us this morning, especially the families and the friends. We thank you, Father, for we have a surety of eternity that you promise us and you give us a hope that we shall pass from death unto life. God, I pray that this hope and this assurance will gladden our hearts this morning. That we know it's not just the end, but life is the beginning of a new love life. Father, we pray that your presence will come in this place. We pray, O oh Lord, especially for those that are in pain. God, you promise us to comfort us. This morning, Lord, we pray that your presence will comfort the broken hearts. You will be with your people this morning. As we come to celebrate and to give God thanks 
for the life of your beloved Bishop Adam. For all that you have achieved. Merciful Father, we humble ourselves before you today. And we come to thank you and to praise you. Yes, to thank you for the life that you have given us through this wonderful woman of God. You have blessed our lives by allowing us to spend a season of time with us. And we are so grateful. And now, Father, even though she's separated, but it's temporary separation, but our hearts are heavy. We ask in our Lord to be with us in this time. And you promise us you will wipe away every tears. You say there will be no more death. For it is the last enemy. And we thank you. For death has been swallowed up in victory. And because of that, we can stand today and lift our hands in adoration and in praise. Bless this service. Bless everyone who are participating in this. Do not let it be like an ordinary service. Do not let us mourn like those who have no hope. Because we serve the living God. You say you are going ahead to prepare a place. And truly you have. Because you have come back and taken our beloved. So we thank you for our life. And Father, we thank you for the serious to bless it. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you and God bless you, Bishop Dr. Jackson. We are doing well and we are going to welcome at this moment in time, we are going to welcome Bishop Dr. Francis Moyenia for the next for our Saturday to here. Thank you.
Thank you very much. My duty now, the family, the clergy, my brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, may I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this service that marks the journey for the final journey here on of Professor Dr. Ami Kakui. Today, we are gathered here in grief. We are gathered here in love to remember the life of Professor Ami and to support one another during this difficult time as we all honor her beautiful journey and as we celebrate the legacy of life, of kindness, and joy that she left behind. In this moment, it's a moment of reflection when we need to embrace the beautiful memories, the shared laughter, the countless moments of joy that marked Bishop Anne's journey on this path. During this service, let us unite our hearts in a song of gratitude, love, and eternal remembrance as we pay tribute to a life that touched Ours in countless beautiful ways as we share experience of grief, acknowledgement, and remembrance. We have therefore congregated here to bid farewell to a remarkable president of RBC, to a bishop, to a grandma, to a nancy to a sister, to a mother, as we celebrate a life that was true testament to courage, to love, and to human strength. During this service, let us come together, hand in hand, heart to heart, to celebrate a life that is well lived, a journey that enriched our souls with love, with joy, and with countless cherished moments. We have come together with our hearts united as we remember Bishop Ani Kabundi, a soul who embodied love in its purest form. We come to cherish the smile, the laughter, the wisdom, and the love that Bishop Aran showered upon all of us, making our world a brighter and warmer place. This is why throughout this service, we will celebrate Bishop Aran's life Remembering the precious moments that brought laughter. Moments that brought love. Moments that brought wisdom to all who knew her. We shall hear from Revelation Bible College, where she served as president. We shall hear from the Transatlantic and Pacific Alliance of Churches, the body that consecrated her as a bishop. We shall hear from friends who have been with her 
in and out of ministry. We shall be here for family members who will share their heartfelt tributes and cherished memories, bringing bishops' values, passions, and kindness in focus. As we remember Professor Bishop Ban Kabundi, let us take inspiration from the words of Albert Einstein, only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. End of quote. That is what guided her actions. As we stand as witnesses to the countless ways in which her caring spirit touched and uplifted us. Today, let us honor Bishop Anne Fabundi's kind hearts and her devoted life that was centered on service, that was centered on, on empathy and making positive impact on the lives of others in a truly meaningful and fulfilling ways. God bless you all. Then the same 
and that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is thy victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the glory, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. May the Lord bless the reading of the word. Once again, I remind you, and you already know that God's word is forever settled in heaven. Somebody help me say amen. Amen. Thank you. We are in the house of the Lord because his word is forever settled in heaven. The next part of the service that we are going to listen is the eulogy of our dear professor, Bishop Dr. Anne. And when we are listening to this eulogy, I just felt I was sitting there for a minute and I thought to say this to you and to myself. How will your eulogy be read when you cannot read it yourself? And what will make what, what will be read is what you have done. So we are going to listen to this part of the service through Apostle Gladys, uh, Apostle Dr. Joyce, and you will help us to listen to the life story of Professor Anne. I give you time to come. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Apostle Dr. Joyce to come and tell us in a few words, in a few minutes, who was Professor Bishop Anne. Professor. 
Let us drive into her story, into her life briefly. And this journey starts with a story uh, as told by her son, David Jora Mwangi Kamande. It feels just, as, uh, just yesterday when I last saw your radiant smile, yet it has been 26 years. I was only eight years old when we embarked on a church mission promising to return soon. Since then, I waited eagerly for your embrace, yearning for the warmth of your love and the wisdom of your guidance. You watched me grow throughout my teenage and in my youth, nurturing my dreams, instilling in me the values of faith and perseverance. I remember our days in the village of Muranga, toiling in the fields so that you could provide for us, walking along long distances to the open markets for better, better trade so that we could experience things you, would, you wouldn't get for us. You made countless sacrifices, washing dishes, cleaning restaurants, working in aid care in the UK, in your early years there, all to ensure that we had a chance and had a better life. Despite our struggles, you never wavered in your faith or your love for us. I remember how you carried your old world tunnel Bible that was your constant companion, and how you are, uh, your gift of ministry touched countless lives. You became an MC at events like weddings and fundraisings. Your special gift shining brightly for all to see. Your journey wasn't easy, moment. I know now all the, uh, of the night. You spent as a night guard, working tirelessly to make ends meet. I remember how you spent nights studying the word of God in theology. I was thrilled to call you Pastor Anne for the first time. So leverage and how we would crack jokes if you ever became a bishop. I, uh, and I would have to address you as, as such in the house. But through a call, you remain steadfast in your love for us, your children. I read your book, Mommy, My Walk with God, that you so boldly and simply talks about your past life and experience, experiences with God. I was over the moon when I learned about your consecration as bishop, and from there on, I knew a spiritual covering in New Orleans. When I told you I was moving to Australia, your emotions were a mix of concerns and happiness. Though the distance between us grew, our bond remained unbreakable. We tried to be planning our future of a phone calls and video chats. I would keep you company during COVID-19 lockdowns until you would fall asleep. I would do your online grocery shopping too. You loved meat. You loved pumpkins, mushrooms, and chicken noodle soup. You always preferred white meat and the best grocery fragrance on the sales of Waitrose supermarkets. You blessed my marriage and prophesied over my children began evaluating the arrival of each new member of our family. You were my love, mom. Your stories and experiences were my beauty rights, reading me through the, the darkest of days. I will hear your voice in my ear, offering words of comfort and wisdom. You quietly introduced me to the Liberation Bible College, sharing your achievements and disappointments, constantly reminding me that this will be our inheritance and legacy to be. Life. I remember your private lectures we would have on phone as a side difference was my biggest ignorance in attending those classes. Now, as I face the un unbearable pain of your absence, I cringe to the memories you shared, your love, your laughter, your 
who are unfair, uh, unwavering faith, they are each forever in my heart. You were a woman of uh, fine, excellent, and have perfection in your work. You taught me how to dress and remain diplomatic in chaos and to always be grateful all the time in, in all circumstances. I wish you more than words can express. Mom, the tears brown my vision as I struggle to come to terms with your loss. But I need is the pain. I find stories in knowing that you are at peace, surrounded by the love, prayers, and generous, um, sorry, by the love and prayers you generously give. I love you more, more than words can convey. You are my everything, and though you may be cold, you are spirit lives on in the lives you touch and the hearts you inspire. You will, we will meet one day, but until then, may your soul rest in eternal peace. With love, with all my love. Bishop Professor Anne Wanjiro Kafudi's life journey starts on 27th August 1959 in Kenya, Yahoo County. County uh, Kihingo Ferrich, and was a football in the race of to the late Stephen Mwenda Kasumi and the late Margaret Jerry Kasumi Mwenda. She was a wife to Titus Kamande, Maura, mother to the late Stephen Mwenda, Eric George Minor, Kesia Jerry, David Joram Mwangi, Margaret Mozoni and Peter Derito. Mother in the world to Murphy Jai Kanyuki, Sarah Jerry, Anastasia Wangari, a talking grandmother to Maxwell Patience, Bridget, uh, CK Jai, Jason, Uji, and Jesse. Born into a wonderful family of six, she was sister to Peter Derito Kafuti Mwenda, the great Joseph Kaburi Mwenda, Joe Mwenda, Samuel Gari, Gara Kafudi Mwenda, Joyce Wajiro Kafudi, and Rose Wairimu Kafega of UK. She was Auntie Kafudi, uh, she was Auntie to Kevin UK, David, Isa, Sam, Dan, Stevie, Tito, the great Mwehaki, Anne Margaret, Evelyn, Papa, Christine, Wainaina, TJ, Jerry, Joss, Steve, and Shosh, to many of the children of those nephews and nieces. Family was a big thing to Bishop Anne, and she got all, she not only took a native role, but also a focal role in the life of her own children, but in that of her but in that of her siblings and their, their children. Born with a passion for knowledge and hard devoted to service, Anne's journey in educating in education was nothing short of extraordinary. As distinguished bishop and esteemed professor of theology, Anne's academic passions were merely about gaining knowledge, were not merely about gaining knowledge, but about impacting wisdom and sharing and shaping futures. Her relentless dedication to learning and teaching has countless lives, instilling values of compassion, integrity, or and faith in all that she mentor. Throughout her illustrious career, and achieved remarkable milestones and young upgrades that reflected her profound impact on the academic and spiritual rights. Her unwavering commitment to excellence coupled with her compassionate leadership made her a beacon of inspiration for students, colleagues, and co 
communities alike. As a result, I started her early education in Kenya at Yambu Primary School. Later, she joined Teresa, Teresa Girls High School in Nairobi in 1974 to 1977. In 1986, as a young wife, a mother, she started her ministry work and served in the Pentecostal Evangelistic Fellowship of Africa as a church elder and women's ministry leader. In 1999, she went abroad to further her studies in the United Kingdom. She joined Green Party's College of Ministry and achieved a diploma. In charismatic studies, BA degree in biblical studies at Temple College London, a master's degree in theology at Christ Universal uh, Bible College. She was appointed the principal of Christ Universal College and a teacher at the college. It has not, uh, it, was, it was from there that she received her honorary degree. In 2003, she became a pastor, and seven years later, God promoted her to a higher calling when she was consecrated into the office of the bishop in 2010. And successfully, in the year 2011, Bishop Professor Ali Kafubi founded the Reformation Bible College, RBC, as the, uh, as the president with the headquarters in Hampton, England, and branches in USA and Africa. Reformation Bible College is a non-denominational and charismatic college founded and set up to produce graduates whose lifestyles will, consist, uh, will be consistent with the word of God. And their motto is excellence through training. The college is accredited by the Accreditation Association of Theological and Educational Institutes International, Cooperation of USA, and Transatlantic and Pacific Alliance of Churches, APA, a mega of churches together in England and churches together in, in Britain and Ireland. RBC trains and ordains that graduate, and after their years of training, they graduate to work as chaplains in prisons, hospitals, some go for missionary work, others find their own churches or ministries, and others are great workers in their uh, respective churches. Up to today, the number of trained men and women College total to 1,956, with 1,897 graduates, 35 doctors, 20 honorary doctor doctorates, and four professors. Professor Anne Kafu was also the founder caring for the coastal ministries and intercessory prophetic ministry a five-branch charismatic gathering of women pastors in the UK. Teacher, uh, a teacher of family prayer, passionate worship, prophetic intercession, weaving together the, uh, to ignite spiritual fires across communities. In the heart of bustling cities and uh, slain countryside, these women of faith we come together, their voices lifted in unity to heaven, seeking divine guidance and unleashing the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Their meetings were not just gathering, they were celestial reductions where divine messages flowed like rivers, stirring hearts and igniting souls with the fire of revival. The ministry. The ministry's mission extended beyond the confines of church walls, armed with unwavering faith and anointing these women, anointing these women, anointing these women would venture into neighborhoods, knocking on doors, not just to share the gospel, 
but to usher in the presence of God. Their footsteps echoed the ancient parts of prophets, bringing healing, deliverance, and salvation to those hungry for spiritual awakening. Every encounter was a testament to the transformative power of, of God's love. As lives were touched, chains were broken, miracles became no, uh, the norm. Miracles became the norm. This ministry was a beacon of hope, a, uh, a catalyst for revival, and a testament to the unstoppable force of women empowered by the Holy Spirit. Having for the mantle of prophecy and intercession to bring heaven's touch to earth. She was also the Bishop of Transatlantic and Pacific Alliance of Churches, APAC, in charge of ordinations and consecration in the United Kingdom. Bishop Anne Kafudi and her sister Lepre de Los Cafega pioneered Caring Heart Ministry, with, which started in her sister's Reverend de Los house in 20, uh, 2000. It was a ministry based based on prayers and reached out to the poor and the needy. The ministry grew from humble beginnings, from strength to strength, and it was there, it was there uh, through her leadership in the ministry, she was ordained as a leveraged minister. In 2021, together with her children, they established the heart of massive foundation in Kenya, a ministry that reached out to the poor and needy. Currently, Heart of Massive Audition feeds 30 needy families in Kenya. Bishop Professor Anne Kafudi had many passions. My work with God. A book she wrote is not just a book title. It's a journey of faith, love, devotion, penned by remarkable woman whose beauty both outward and inward shone brightly in every aspect of her life. In this capti uh, cap uh, captivating book, the, uh, the intricate weaves together her experiences, reflections, deep insight gained from her intimate relationship with God. Though heartfelt stories inspired at notes and profound lessons, she invites leaders into her spiritual journey, a journey filled with moments of joy, challenges, and unwavering faith. Her love for fashion, evident in her, in her uh, impeccable sense of style, that embraced the, the richness of gold, the purity of white, and the deep aroma of wine and bread, mirrored her appreciation for beauty in all its forms. Just as she adorned herself with grace and elegance, she adorned her words with wisdom and sincerity, creating a literary masterpiece that resonates with the, with the readers on a profound level. Okay, another passion of hers served as a, as a metaphor for the nourishment of the souls. Just as he delighted in preparing delicious meals that satisfied the body, her words in my work with God nourished the spirit, offering a, a sustenance and comfort to those seeking a deeper connection with, her, with their faith. Her love for reading, evident in her ferocious appetite, for knowledge and wisdom, enriched her writing with the depth and richness. Drawing from a wealth of experience and insight gained from her literal explorations, she crafted a book that not only informs but also inspires, guiding readers on their own spiritual journeys. Through my work with God, she leaves behind a legacy of faith, beauty, and wisdom. A legacy that constitutes to touch, to touch hearts, 
illuminate minds and uproot souls. Her favorite colors of gold, white, wine red, and not just use on on a parrot, on a parrot, they are reflection of her vibrant spirit, her pure heart, and her deep connection to the divine. Illness and the news. Bishop Professor Anne, commitment to a healthy lifestyle and compassed mental and emotional well-being. She practiced mindfulness, stress reducing techniques, finding harmony and peace in her daily routines. Her positive outlook and silent spirit were evident in her in in interactions with others, inspiring those around her to embrace wellness as a cornerstone of a fulfilling life. On the early morning at 3 a.m. of 15th March 2024, Professor Anne Wajiro Kafudi peacefully passed away at her home in Northampton, UK, due to a heart attack. While her physical presence may no longer be with us, her legacy of living a healthy, vibrant life serves as a lasting a testament to the power of wellness and the impact it has on one's journey. Amen. Thank you for hearing us.